Okay, so the last group of vertebrates we're going to talk about that are thought of as the most advanced are going to be class mammalia, which are going to be the mammals. So obviously this is a category that we're part of. So um, mammals are going to have a couple of characteristics. First um, obvious one is going to be hair. Now um, a lot of people are like, well there's mammals out there that don't have hair. They probably had hair at some point in their development. So some organisms have hair as they're developing fetus and then as they get older they lose the hair. That's kind of like us, right? If you've ever seen a premature baby, they usually have like a ton of like baby fuzz on them and that, that they lose. Um, so hair is going to be an important thing. Now hair is awesome because it can do a couple of different things for us. First one is that it can reduce body heat escaping. So um, if you look at this picture of my old dog Roxy, you can see that um, that was a hilarious day. It was just snowing and snowing. I couldn't find her. I look outside and there she is completely buried, buried in the snow. Um, so what's going on here is notice that the snow didn't melt and that's because she has that thick layer of hair that was actually preventing her from um, reducing a lot of body heat and so it wasn't melting the snow because there was no body heat escaping. So very, very efficient in, in that aspect. Another thing hair can do is provide camouflage, right? So um, let's see if I can get this to go away. Um, so you can see these polar bears here, cutest picture ever. Um, they are actually using their hair for camouflage, right? So um, there's some really cool studies about polar bears and how when they are trying to come up on prey, how they actually cover their black noses with their paws so that they can actually um, sneak up on prey better. So that's another reason for hair. Um, and then the last one is going to be, uh, or second to last one, is going to be for sensory structures, right? So if you think about whiskers, whiskers are extremely important for like cats and things like that to sense um, how they're getting through space and those types of things. And then the last one here is going to be for protection, right? If you think about a porcupine, it has those modified hairs, which are quills, and that protects things from going up and trying to attack it. So all of those are going to be excellent reasons that organisms are going to have hair. Another thing that mammals are going to have is going to be mammary glands. That's where the name comes from. And so that's going to allow them produce, to produce milk for their newborns. Um, <clears throat> if it's, it's kind of interesting if you think about it. We're really the only species that drinks, first of all, other organisms' milk on a regular basis. And second of all, we're the only species that drinks milk past the nursing phase. So there's a lot of people that are advocates for not having milk after we are kids. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of sides to that story. But anyway, kind of interesting to think about. Um, another thing is that mammals are endothermic, which means we make our own body temperature from inside. And an advantage to that is we can be active in the day or at night, right? If you think about a lot of things that are cold-blooded, um, they are going to be limited because their met metabolic rate goes down at night when the sun isn't there to warm them up, unless if they've got hot rocks to use. Okay, we also have a placenta, which is going to allow all sorts of things to pass over from the mother to the kid. Um, we have teeth, so we're going to talk in a later chapter about different types of teeth and how that can be related to our eating habits. Um, some of us are actually able to digest plants, so um, cows and things are going to have those protists and bacteria in their guts to help them digest cellulose. Some mammals are going to have hooves and horns, so the hooves are going to be there to protect their toes, <clears throat> and then horns are going to be there for territorial mating types of things. Um, you're also going to have one type of mammal that can actually fly, and that's going to be bats, right? So I think I've got a picture of a cute little bat here. I love bats. They're awesome creatures. Yeah, there you go. Um, so a lot of people are like, well, what about the flying squirrel? Um, flying squirrels are not technically flying, right? They're gliding, so they're not really included as a mammal that can actually um, fly. Okay, so what we're going to do at the end here is just go through a couple of different orders of um, living mammals that are out there. So the first order is going to be monotremes, monotremata, and these are going to be egg-laying mammals. So that's going to include the duck-billed platypus and the spiny anteater. Um, two very interesting organisms. So they're obviously outliers. They um, are going to just kind of be in this category because that's where they ended up. So um, there's your duck-billed platypus and then here's your spiny anteater. So both of these guys are going to create eggs for reproduction. So obviously what puts them in the class mammalia is the fact that they have hair and a lot of those other characteristics. Okay, um, the next group is going to be um, marsupiala. So marsupials are going to be the ones that have that pouch, right? So if you think about kangaroos and koala bears, they're going to be in that category. Let's see if I can get to that next slide for you. Yeah, so there's your kangaroo, um, and there's your koala bear. 
There it is. So those guys are going to create that pouch, and so what happens is they give birth into the pouch, and then the organism is going to mature in the pouch. <clears throat> okay, then, so the, there are 19 orders of mammals. Those two that I just mentioned are going to be the kind of weird ones, and the other 17 are going to be the placental ones that there's a lot of, you know, they, they just are going to give regular birth. Um, so the order that everybody's always interested in is going to be primates, the primates, right? And so um, that's going to be the category we're in. And so a couple of things that are going to make primates primates is that they are going to have grasping fingers and toes. So they have that opposable thumb, that famous opposable thumb that's a nice advantage. And the other is that they're going to have binocular vision. So what I mean by that is that our eyes are way more forward on our head and we have overlapping fields of vision. If you think about like a deer or a giraffe or something like that, their eyes are on the sides of their heads. So they don't really have that overlapping field of vision. So it's just a little bit more advanced. Um, so another little grouping that the primates can be grouped into is going to be the prosimians, and that's going to be lemurs, lorises, and tarsiers. I love these guys. They're so cute. So <clears throat> here's a lemur, and here is a loris. Super cute. And there is a tarsier. Looks very surprised, right? So I bet you can figure out when these guys are active, right? They're definitely nocturnal. A couple of clues would be the size of those huge eyes so they could take in as much light as they can at night. And then the other thing is the color red. Red is the first color to disappear when the sun goes down so they can come out really quickly and not be see seen as easily. Um, okay, so <clears throat> if I could get back to the notes. The rest of this is just going to be talking about um, how we kind of came to be. So um, the fact that we're anthropoids, and that's going to include the monkeys, apes, and humans. And then um, if we were just going to follow humans, because a lot of people are interested in that, then um, we are in the group ho hominids and then hominins. And then this last little part, I just kind of go through the different ancestors of humans and kind of when they um, were about. So that's it. That's kind of the end of as far as the whole phylum and class thing goes. So the other chapters are going to be about digestive systems and respiratory systems and circulatory systems and just some little differences between all the different groups that we've talked about. Thank you.